Hello! Good to see you again. I know. Wow. Um, there was various folks checking my identity when I came back after the hairdressers. Just not absolutely sure who I was. I, before I had gone out, I looked like Steve Bannon in his arrest photographs. And when I came back, I looked like I had just come out of prison. So um, I just I knew I needed to get a haircut before we did the uh, Sunday service back in church. So hopefully, um, hopefully you've been doing well. Um, and I didn't think we'd be doing, I thought we'd be back. I thought everything would be on the go. And as you can tell, um, obviously, not so much. I think things, I mean, I think the honest answer now is everyone's got their own ideas. Different folks think different things. And so um, I think we're going to have to try and just sort of test the water and have a service where folks can come back to church. Some people want to, some people don't want to. And I know of one church, my mother's church, where... You know, people, there was very, very few, I think, like, four or five folks came along. And then there's others that have obviously been opening up and people have been going along. Um, but what's clear is that I think there's a certain trepidation in society. Maybe it's amongst older folks uh, more than most, as in they might be a bit more susceptible, might be a, uh, they might have more to worry about in terms of the virus than, than younger people. But obviously, between weddings and house parties and, and what can sometimes feel like lots of young people gathering for um, groups that don't really look like, you know, a group of eight or less and three family households, it, it just looks like some folks are thinking things are back to normal. And as a consequence, there's a lot of trepidation and a lot of fear in others. And um, what it struck me was that I needed to do this, uh, that I was, the, the message that I needed to think about was something that I had actually done, I would say within about the first fortnight of thoughts for the day going, you know, daily. Um, I... I had this idea, and you might not be aware of this. Um, it's not like this now, but at the beginning, um, my son Joshua did all the technical kind of stuff in terms of not of filming it. I've always kind of filmed it on, on, on my own, but he did what's known as exporting and uploading. He kind of put the thing together and then uploaded it on to the internet. And because he did that and I didn't know how to do that, his opinion became important. And then um, I suppose my daughter, uh, Rebecca, her opinion became, they, they formed a wee sort of like editorial committee and they said what could and couldn't happen. I'm just sharing so you know who's actually in charge. Um, and so I came up with this idea and they said, no, you can't do that. Whereas now I do know how to do the uploading and I do know how to do the exporting. So I'm doing it but I'm not telling them. It'll just be between you and me. <laughs> this was, they deemed this to be too kind of edgy, too on the border of being crass. Um, I said, we've got the, this board game in our, in our, we've got a few board, like family board games, we quite like those. And we've got this board game and I could talk about that and they said no no you can't do that it's unacceptable so here is the boat you tell me if you think this is unacceptable this we had this right from the outset and i'm sharing it now primarily because one of the things that has become apparent is like things on netflix uh, you know the television programs where it's things like the film is actually called Pandemic, and then there's another one called Contagion, and then there's another one called Outbreak. There's, there's all these films that are all about global pandemics, and folks are watching them by the hundreds of thousands. And it's like, is that not a bit weird? 
as in we're living through one. Do we really want to watch it? My mother never really liked uh, soap operas because it was like, why would I want to watch something that's all about everyday life? I do everyday life myself. I want to watch something completely different. I'd like to watch something where somebody, you know, gets killed in the first five minutes and then Hercule Poirot solves it in the last five minutes. That idea. So some people clearly enjoy that kind of thing. But lots of people want to see everyday life. And that's usually soap operas. But now it's things like contagion, pandemic and outbreak. We want to know in our entertainment, we want to know stuff about pandemics. And so... Um, the thing I wanted to point out about this, which because I think it's actually, this is, this is, quote, just a board game, but as you can tell, it's called Pandemic, and therefore, one, it's obviously quite appropriate, but if you're into board games, you might know this is a very, this is one of the first examples of a very new trend in board games. Most of you who are involved uh, in playing board games with children are going to have the standard ones. Scrabble, Cluedo, Monopoly, and if you're really, really committed and in, prepared to invest the time, Risk. Um, those are the games where the rules change, but basically there's a number of players and you have to be the player who wins, who beats them. Um, so my son Joshua, who's a big board game player, and um, you know he he will set up in Risk in Australia or Australasia, and just build and build and then destroy everybody. And the point is, you destroy everybody. And then my son Joshua, because he destroys everybody when he plays Monopoly, um, he is he's, he's this really kind of nice, placid really nice person and then you put a, a monopoly board in front of him and he turns into this greedy avaricious capitalist pig of a person who destroys everybody he usually gets it's, if it's not part lane and mayfair it's usually you know the green ones and the yellow ones and the red ones maybe the orange ones um and you know we're left with old kent road and it's like pff, you know this is rubbish and he destroys everyone the whole point about pandemic is, surprise, surprise, a pandemic breaks out. But the, the premise of the game is pandemics are global. They're bigger than any one nation state's ability to cope with. A pandemic, unlike anything else in the world, what nations need to do, spoiler alert, very unusual in board games, what people in this game need to do, what nations need to do, is work together. So there's the, the origin, or there's the place, the region and the planet, there's, there's a kind of um, map of the world, and um, there's the place where the, the outbreak occurs, and then there's the, you need a lab as close to the outbreak to identify it, and then work out then you had you've got other places where you uh, manufacture the vaccine and there's different places that have different you know raw materials to make the end process the end result of the vaccine and so it, it ends up it's never one country's ability to do the whole thing and so what they do is work together um board games normally have i'm the winner in this game pandemic it's everybody who wins. Because if you don't all win, you all lose. Because the pandemic destroys everybody, kills every living being on the planet. And it's the pandemic that wins. And so you have to get your head around this very unusual concept playing a board game. It is as we all work together that we get the job done. I regularly make reference to what one might call one another Bible verses. This is First Thessalonians chapter 5, and this is verse 15. This is, as Paul often does, um, he states the negative, and then just for good measure, he states the positive. 
See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to, go to do good to one another and to everyone. What is it at the moment that would constitute doing good to everyone? It would be, I would contend from a Christian point of view, doing what you do in pandemic doing what I think First Thessalonians chapter 5 is asking you to do. You work together because ultimately doing this on your own, nobody on their own can beat this virus, but it is as we work together and probably even more so now after six months when we've all gone, Jinx, lockdown was really tough, but now we can ease the restrictions a wee bit. Easing the restrictions makes things as far as I can tell, worse. There are more people frightened because they see some people essentially living without rules and just getting back to, quotes, normal. I'm not sure we're even close to getting back to normal. If it feels normal, as Nicola says, then that's probably too much. We are meant to be living our lives with the understanding that this virus is still out there and we haven't beaten it yet. We have to wear the mask. We do have to do the social distancing. We have to do all the boring stuff that we really, really wish we didn't have to do anymore. We have to not sing when we go to church, which I just find such a pain. And for all those of you who think, well, he just picks modern stuff, I really miss hymns. I really do. I genuinely just miss singing. And it's not because I'm that great a singer. It's just, it's what we do together that makes church. It's what we do together that beats the pandemic. And it's what we do together that makes you win in pandemic. As long as you realise if you win, it's because we all win. The main thing we have to make sure is we don't all lose. So whether it's from First Thessalonians chapter 5 or whether it's from a board game that weirdly gets all the players to work together or whether it's just from the common sense recognition of what's required in the face of a pandemic. Now, even if it is six months into this, the rules, though lockdown may have been lessened and slightly eased, the rules are still predicated on the same system. We work together to beat this. And we need to do that even more now than we did before. Let me know if you know any board games that you've been playing in this particular lockdown season, more so than normal. And um, let me know if you think it was right. And Joshua and Rebecca were just correct. And I should never have done a thought for day on pandemic because it was just too close to the bone. Either way, it's nice to see you again. And I've still got my tie on from uh, Sunday morning in church. Either way, good to see you. Either way, remember, because I almost forgot. Go with God, because I know he goes with you. Bye.